Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for July 3rd, 2024. Well, I hope everyone had a wonderful evening, uh, got some rest, and ready for another likely very low volume and volatile day in the market. Let's take a look at what happened overnight here. First off, um, Asian markets were mostly higher last night with only Shanghai being slightly lower, falling about half a percent last night in Shanghai. But the Nikkei soared up uh, 500 points or 1.26 percent overnight, showing lots of bullishness. And Hong Kong was up strongly a full 1.18 percent. If we take a look at European markets this morning, they are also very happy and very bullish this morning. Green across the board. Um, again, a little bit of choppiness um, over there in Europe. We keep swinging back and forth here, but um, looking pretty positive here this morning. And even the CAC really surging up this morning, up 1.46%. Let's take a look at U.S. futures here this morning. They are also in the green, uh, uh, trying to push up Dow, SPY, QQQ, all looking a little bit higher, trying to push on up in what's likely going to be a very light volume day. But we do have quite a bit of data coming our way this morning that could create some uh, price volatility. So be prepared for that. Um, and remember, we have an early close today at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Let's take a look at what we've got going on in oil. Now, oil this morning, if we look at XLE, we had um, oil stocks, oil producers, pushing up for a little while yesterday, and then they ended up fading back. And this morning, we see it actually trying to pop higher as actual oil is softening just a tiny little bit. Right now, oil futures are down seven cents at 82.43 a barrel. We're about a two month high um, here on oil prices and Brent um, being down just one penny. One of the reasons um, we've been going up is there is the story out there that we're going to see a pretty good drawdown in uh, those oil supplies here today suggesting that consumers are out spending and of course that's pretty normal around a major summer holiday so kind of keep that in mind um, if we take a look at natural gas and natural gas is also just a little bit lower here this morning after it tried to bounce a touch yesterday might find a little bit of support in here on uh, UNG, but certainly natural gas has taken a major hit here recently back to the downside. So keep an eye on that. If we take a look at our precious metals here this morning, precious metals, well, we've got a little bit of an interesting thing going on here. Um, gold surging up here this morning. We've got gold really powering up here this morning up $25. Uh, dollars, so it's, it's exactly twenty-five fifty an ounce at this very second in uh, gold uh, gold futures. So really showing a lot of strength here this morning as gold is powering up. Silver also showing a really nice gap up here this morning. Strong move in silver so keep an eye on that also seeing copper platinum and palladium up and palladium might be something to be keeping an eye on look at this it's been extremely volatile but look at this extension coming in here on palladium breaking that downtrend here any resting pullback may set up an opportunity there in that chart so if we take a look at crypto crypto having the opposite kind of day today. Uh, Bitcoin down $1,721 a coin here this morning and we're looking pretty red across the board in cryptos this morning. I would say one of the culprits um, that we have going on in, in here is this volatility that we have seen in the US dollar um, trying to pull back just a little bit but you can see also in the pre-market trying to gain a little bit of a bid here so watch that carefully as 
Well, we're, we're seeing an awful lot of fluctuation here in currencies and things going on right now. The Japanese yen continues to be very, very weak. Um, that is causing some issues here. And of course, if we look at our bonds, our bonds are having some mix of data here as well. The 10 year, 10 years drifted lower at 4.43% and the 30 year has drifted a little bit lower at 4.59%. But the two year has been drifting up at 4.76%. So we'll want to be keeping an eye on those bond yields and that cost of money as we move along. So what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I do very much appreciate it. How about we take a look at these index charts. Let's try to shake off some bias and just see uh, what these charts are telling us about how we might want to approach the market for today. First off, one of the things that's fairly traditional in the United States is um, heading into the 4th of July holiday, we have that lean of bullishness, um, just that celebration um, attitude in the United States. So um, we often have that little bit of lean to the upside. And we're getting a good push here this morning in the diamonds. And yesterday's move was nice, a nice bullish move. Um, it took a while to get going, but as uh, European markets closed to the downside, well, we finally saw um, U.S. futures trying to pick up and we really saw big tech working its magic to surge and that helped the indexes a lot yesterday. So taking a look at the diamonds, pushing up here, remember we have tested this resistance area up here a few times and we have rejected it. Now we're gonna be testing it first thing in the morning to see if we can push on through it. And remember, we've got quite a few data points here this morning that we'll have to chew on to see whether or not that enthusiasm will be maintained through the day. But if the bulls can break through this area of resistance, here in the chart. Well, then we'll start looking up into here. We'll start seeing if we can break through some of these areas up here, and then we'll be pushing up into this upper resistance area of the chart. Now, of course, we'll have to break through this here to start reaching out for all time highs here in the diamonds. And of course, anything above there, blue sky above. If the bears were to come up with any inspiration today and we push us back down, well, of course, we can see there's some price support right in here that's been created in this consolidating move here in that chart. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take this because it's, it's more um, pertinent to current price action data and come right back down into here. Someplace in here is likely that support area on the day if the bears were to find inspiration certainly pushing this back down in here we know is possible because we've seen these 300 point moves move up first thing in the morning and then reverse on the day so we know that that's possible and if we were to push back in here retest of this support would seem rather likely and then if we were to fail that area we would possibly see us uh, starting to come down in here and testing some of these support areas and then on down to the next areas of support. Now, I doubt we move um, down in a really big way today just simply because um, after we get through this morning, a little bit of a morning session, volume is likely to drop hard. It's the getaway day and everyone's going to be heading out of the office as quickly as they can to start their holiday plans. So keep an eye on the diamonds. Let's take a look at the SPY, SPY. No way you can look at this chart and not see just an absolutely bullish um, uh, market here. But we still have that that considerable problem where the majority of stocks are still weak. 
Um, this is a result of big tech giants, and we had a couple make new record highs yesterday, and that's about all it takes to keep these um, stocks going up because they monopolize the index so much. But that being said, this is a very, very bullish chart, and that possibility that we could push right on through here catch some new record highs. It looks like we could open very near a new record high in the SPY heading into the holiday. So kind of watch that carefully um, here. If we can push on through blue sky above in the chart. If the bears were to find inspiration here today, well, you can see these areas of price support in here that we could easily test. We've certainly seen that possibility that we could reverse that much um, within the day. So watch carefully for a potential that we could pull back into there if the bears get going. Then we'd maybe push a little bit lower to test this area and then of course the gap below there. Remember in a shortened day, eh, something major is gonna have to happen if we move a, a whole lot more than that. But um, keep a close eye there on the SPY. Very bullish chart and there's nothing in here that shows bearishness yet. If we take a look at our QQQ, QQQ, new record highs yesterday, new record high close anyway. And we're trying to push this up here in the pre-market this morning. Um, big tech again doing the majority of the lifting here. So um, every reason to believe a blue skies above anything is possible up there. There's no resistance in the way of the QQQ. If the bears were to get inspired today from data a pullback, well, once again, we can see we can pull that candle all the way back within a session easily and if we were to pull back into this area here wouldn't be a major surprise um, that would bring us back toward that trend here in the chart and then that possibility that we could push on a little bit lower to test it pretty heavily and that price support breaking below there then we'd have the worry of maybe slipping down in here and filling this gap but once again holiday week um, where we're likely to lean to the bullish side um, I doubt that there's going to be that much price movement and likely going to be a very low volume day and then if we take a look at our IWM IWM continues to be bearish. That's all there is here. We're, we're trying to push it back up. We got a little tiny upside trend in here, but we've got this downtrend in play. We've got this downtrend in play. We are a long ways away from breaking through major resistance levels to the upside. IWM does not enjoy the big tech giants in there uh, keeping it up. And so um, it remains a stock that's bearish and at the close of yesterday, still closing underneath its 50 day moving average. So keep an eye on that. Um, likely the, the first one that could really start signaling lower if this were to fail. If we get some um, bullish action in here, however, no reason to believe that we can't retest this downtrend resistance up in here. Um, in this resistance in the chart. I think there's every reason to believe that's possible here today. And if the bears were to find that inspiration, possibly a breakdown into here that could break this little upside trend. So um, I would look for extremely low volume in IWM today. And then if we look at our VIX, our VIX yesterday, another day where we continued, we popped up in the morning and then we faded it back having absolutely no fear at all in the morning. We or on the day we closed just right there at 12 handles. We're down here in a very low area, a very complacent area of the market. It does make me nervous that um, we're going to get, that we could get some data um, in the very near future that has a big change in sentiment. As a matter of fact, I made mention of that on mo Monday that Goldman Sachs is worried that by the end of this week, um, uh, we could start to see that reversal here in the market. Now, I don't know if they're right, but they have been warning their customers that after the fourth, start trimming positions because they're expecting some kind of a correction to occur. So we'll just have to watch the price action here in the market, but just be careful when we're this complacent in the market. And if a sell wave starts to happen, um, there'll be a lot of folks running for the door at the same time and it could get painful really quick. So make sure you 
have a plan to protect yourself. If we take a look at our uh, T2122, the T2122 indicator had a nice little bounce yesterday. Pushing back up, we ended up closing up here around 43% of the stocks. This, remember, this is a new high, new low ratio. And you can see we're still below the 50% area here of the market, but I'm guessing we're gonna pump up there um, here this morning and probably pump above that, uh, trying to surge or take advantage of yesterday's move, at least initially. So watch that carefully here today. If the bulls find inspiration, we certainly have upside opportunity in here for them to move and of course, that rally yesterday opens up more opportunity for the bears if the bears were to find inspiration here on the day. If we take a look at our T2108, well, guys, here's the problem. Um, very low activity here in the market. Um, the majority of our stocks, we're about 34 and a half, 35% 30, uh, of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. So we had a few cross up here yesterday, getting back above their 40 day, but overall the trend of this has been very, very bearish. Um, the majority of stocks just aren't performing unless you're in those tech giants. Um, and the tech giants continue to mask um, the true nature of the market is that the majority of stocks are very, very weak. Now we've got this downtrend in here. We could possibly break that here today. The question is, will it hold if it breaks in here? So just kind of keep that in mind that um, we're, we're a very thin market in leadership and that could present a problem if we start to get some um, data here that gets us um, concerned about the elevation of some of these stocks so watch carefully and then if we take a look at our t2107 uh, t2107 also pretty weak but it did push back up yesterday got back above the 50 percent area here so we've got just over half of the stocks above their 200 day moving average. So again, not exactly a major confidence of, wow, this market is unbelievably bullish. It sure looks like that in the indexes, but that's a result of just those big tech giant monopolies out there that are doing all of the lifting. So keep that in mind. If we take a look at our uh, T2101, T2101 is showing us really what the weakness here is, and that's the market breadth. And this is very common. Um, talked about this yesterday um, a little bit, and um, even last night in the uh, public session. When our breadth is this low, it, it's a it's a pretty common thing as we head into earnings. Um, Companies go into a blackout period where they can no longer do corporate buybacks and things like that. And you know, when we have companies like Apple doing a hundred billion dollars in buyback, that is significant volume. And what we're seeing is these company buybacks are becoming such a massive part of the volume of the market that we, um, when they go into the blackout period, we see that breadth decline and decline hard. So as we rallied yesterday, the breadth of the market declined. Not a good sign for a bullish wave in the market. So what it tells you is the possibility that the market could whipsaw really quickly if for some reason we pick up some bearish data or the bears um, get engaged here in the market today because there's not that energy of follow through to show that enthusiasm. So be very careful here as our volume continues to drop. And remember, it won't be until next Friday we get the beginning of big bank earnings to really start moving us along. And then we'll start to see those companies slide out from under their blackout period and maybe we'll start to see breadth improve. So it's very, very common to see light choppy price action, volatile price action as we wait for the next round of earnings. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar is going to be a pretty busy one here this morning. Looking at this, and I didn't get this sized correctly this morning. Um, as you can see, we've got a lot going on. We're gonna have William speaking here this morning. We've got mortgage applications at the same time. 
We've got a challenger job cut report. We've got an ADP number coming in suggesting that consensus is suggesting that uh, private payrolls increased by 161. Remember, that's been a problem for us because the Fed has two mandates, and that is um, balance in the jobs market and balance in the economy in um, that inflation. So watch carefully here. That could be, if this comes in hot, that could be problematic for the market. If it comes in weaker than this, market might enjoy that and celebrate just a little bit saying that we're weakening up enough that the fed can start cutting international trading goods is expected to come into a uh, again another higher deficit of 76 billion dollars keep an eye on that jobless claims then um, all here before the bell remember jobless claims looks like they're punting on this number and consensus meaning they're not really sure where it's going to be they're placing it the same as last time, so 233,000. Watch that carefully here. We may, we've been seeing this weakening of the, of the consumer here. We may start to see this creep up and there is a chance that someday this could suddenly jump up. So watch carefully here how the market reacts to that is, you know, your guess. Um, we've got jobless, oh, excuse me, I already did that. We've got a PMI composite number looking at a 55.1 on the services index, but for some reason, they're giving us no consensus estimate here for uh, what the PMI may be. So um, watch that closely here today. Um, we've got um, factory orders. They're looking for a 0.2, that's a decline from 0.7. We've got ISM services number. They're looking at a 53. That's a little bit of a decline from a 53.8 that we saw last time. So um, yeah, a, lot, a busy morning here of data, uh, which could create some volatility with this light volume in the market. And then keeping in mind, we've got a bill auction, a four week, eight week. We've got petroleum status that will be here at 1030. So keep an eye on those oil prices. Lots of bond announcements. Another uh, bond auction here on the four month bill. A natural gas report. The market closes at two. Um, excuse me, at one, and then at two, we get the FOMC minutes release. So um, yeah, get ready for a, a wild and crazy day um, and an early close. And of course, we're closed all day Thursday. Just a reminder, um, um, hit run candlesticks, right way options, BYOB services. We will all be closed on Thursday and Friday um, for um the market so there will not be a morning market prep video on friday but you will want to be keeping a really close eye on this employment situation number this is something that goldman kind of highlighted could be that catalyst that um, brings out the bears so watch carefully here on that friday report Let's take a look at our earnings calendar here for today. In our earnings calendar, well, I've only got one notable for today. And um, for the rest of the week, there is no notable earnings coming out. Um, Constellation Brands reporting here, and you can see trying to pop up just a little bit this morning um, um, on that report. So watch that carefully here on Constellation. Um, and that really is the only notable for the rest of the week. So um, not a whole lot of inspiration on that front. Um, here. I've utilized that inspiration so much to hype the market here. That's another reason why we're getting such low breath in the market. There just isn't that energy here to get really, really excited about much of anything. So let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that everyone if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could do me that favor and that click that subscribe button on youtube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video and if you find these videos to be useful or helpful if you could do me that favor and that would be click that thumbs up button leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I appreciate it very, very much. And um, 
Thank you so much to everyone who shares these videos out on your social media feed and supports the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link as well. You guys are truly, truly awesome and you humble me every day with the kind comments. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. Remember guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You're gonna to have to do your own due diligence, be very, very careful in this market, and realize that with the low volume, pretty much anything is possible. We could hop and pop and whipsaw and turn around. So make sure you have a plan to protect yourself. I'm gonna start off today with big tech because my goodness, did we have a day in big tech yesterday where we uh, started lower on the day and then it was just a mad dash uh, surge in two stocks. Let's take a look at Microsoft here first. Um, Microsoft, new record highs, uh, continuing to push on up, getting uh, very, very extended away from its 50-day moving average, but right now there seems to be no price people aren't willing to pay to push Microsoft higher. And it uh, looks like we're headed that direction this morning here. So very, very bullish here on Microsoft. Google has set up a really nice bullish pattern here, a buy pattern, I think. Nice little rest and consolidation out here to trend and that uh, bullish engulfing here for that opportunity to push on through once again to new record highs in Google. Very, very bullish chart. Apple, app, whoops. Apple, new record highs yesterday, stretching on up. Remember, these companies are bigger than a lot of countries. And that's no joke, they are bigger than a lot of countries um, in how much money they um, control. And you can see here, um, this is these are just huge moves for these stocks, and that's moving these indexes higher and continuing as we push this tech um, tech move to the upside. So very bullish new record highs here in Apple. Tesla had an amazing day yesterday, really surging up, even though their sales numbers um, came in at 4.8 percent less than the year before but it was better than expected. So we had a major surge to the upside in Tesla and we are extending this morning as well. Be real careful on this straight up parabolic move as we come into resistance in the chart. I'd be expecting some kind of pullback to occur here in Tesla. Watch that carefully. And then of course we have Meta. Meta um, challenging this major resistance in the chart and with the bullishness that we have in the market, every reason to believe that could push through. Amazon, Amazon another big winner yesterday. New record highs in Amazon as that continues to stretch to the upside in that big surge. So watch that carefully. And the one that really surprised me yesterday is the complete reversal here on AMD pushing up. I was really looking at this as a possible short in this downtrend. Please keep in mind guys that we have tested this area up here before we've surged up here and then we can't hold it. So don't be too surprised if this were to fade back here today. I can't say it's going to come all the way back down, but watch that carefully. If you are interested in AMD, make sure it gets some kind of follow through um, to be picking that up. And I would say that about a lot of these stocks. Uh, make sure you get some follow through on this low volume that we're seeing in the market before you um, really jump in and chase those things uh, to, the, to the upside. Um, they're very, very stretched and we have to expect a pullback could be coming at any time. Let's take a look at energy. Um, energy um, um, in XLE, we broke above this downtrend here in the chart trying to push up. But if we look at some of the individual stocks here, ExxonMobil, very, very bullish pattern where we broke higher here. You guys can see the inverted head and shoulders type pattern that's forming in here. And as this rests and pulls back in here, watch for that opportunity for a move on higher. Take a look at Valero. Valero, a refiner, really pushing up here, stretching to the upside after breaking that downtrend. Now give us a little bit of a rest or consolidation. Hold this area in here and we could look for that next move to the upside. Uh, ConocoPhillips, 
um, also in that nice little inverted head and shoulders pattern showing up here that resting pullback if we can hold this support area in the chart and get those buyers to step in all you really have to do is place a price alert right here and if that pops on through look for that next move up to the next resistance area in the chart on Conoco and there's quite a few that you can look at MRO doing the same kind of inverted pattern in there um, stocks like um, Occidental um, showing that pattern in here that nice little resting consolidation um, as that starts to come back around so we'll want to be keeping a close eye on those and of course that oil number today could have an impact on um, these prices so watch that carefully let's take a look at the financials financials had a really good day yesterday surging up um, you know all of the news that's out there about really difficult times in the banks and potential failures coming in the regional banks it's kind of remarkable that um, we just had such a big surge to the upside but that being said i don't have to understand this my job is to read the chart and you can see in here we're coming into a price resistance if we can push on through there that is going to be important to push on through to this next resistance area in the chart if the bears were to find some ins inspiration and fade this back um, remember we get this little upside trend coming in here um, in that chart so keep an eye on that we've got a lot of those stocks like JP Morgan um, ripping in here new record highs Goldman Sachs pushing back up Morgan Stanley pushing back through some resistance BAC new record highs um, so a lot of bullishness here in the major banks and remember they're going to begin big bank earnings next Friday so pay close attention to that it could be just enthusiasm or anticipation of those earnings making those rally right now but remember we've got a lot of concern in the banking sector so be careful here don't overdo it and be careful with the fear of missing out chase to the upside uh, beyond that let's take a look at a few other places in here you guys know I still like um, NetApp the way it's setting up here um, just gradually moving to the upside now volume's been low but that's a nice looking chart continuing to show upside I think CRM this nice little rest and consolidation out of popping out of here I think still has that opportunity that could push on up into here for that next resistance area in CRM still looking good in that chart uh, Walmart had a nice reversal yesterday popping up off of this support watch that carefully to see if that can push on through now again I want to see follow through here because if we draw a line across this we're really trending lower on lower volume so we need that follow through to kind of prove that we can get something going there so watch that pretty closely Costco another one just had a really nice surge up yesterday trying to push through so get that follow through um, on that to make sure it can push on through and maybe we can get enough energy to break into these new highs once again in those charts so keep an eye on that remember in anything that you trade market breadth is very weak market is struggling here to find that energy to um, take any direction and keep moving and one of the th questions I asked last night in um, the video or um, in, in the uh, public e-learning session is are you finding it difficult when you find a good trade put some money down on a trade you're finding um, a lot of folks agreed that they're finding it very difficult for that stock to continue to perform and that is a symptom we get these good signals with the volatility in low volume but oftentimes we have a very difficult time following through and seeing that move follow on through. So be careful here with over trading in a very low volume market. So with that, everyone, have a wonderful day. Be careful, be safe. Also, have a fantastic 4th of July holiday as we celebrate our Independence Day. Um, probably a very important holiday considering the the craziness that we see in politics today so enjoy it have a great time we'll see you right back here remember closed on friday um, the market's not closed i'm closed on friday i'll see you right back here 
um, and next Monday morning. Take care, everyone. I want to wish you all the very, very best. <laughs>